Welcome to Discerning the Forums. I'm Nick. I'm Anthony. Welcome to our Alul Conversations on Jackie Alul's, yes, the, the, of the Technocratic Society, Chapter 2. And Technolo- Technological. Technological I mean, Society, that's right. I mean, yes. you're not wrong, <laughs> but like... Technically, I'm not it's right. Technological. Either. You're not. You're not wrong, and you're not right. You're somewhere. You're in the <laughs> the tension of the dialect, though, the dialectical there. tension between his <laughs> prediction and our current reality of the technocratic yep. <laughs> society. I'm just not trying to be precise. That's all. Good, good, good. That's what we need in this episode: is to not be precise with our words. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, yeah. So um, we're delving into chapter two, and. This is a, a fascinating chapter. I just want to start out by kind of reminding folks what the definition of technique is for Lule, because that'll be important as we go. Um, right. Yeah. So, it, um, <clears throat> so in the introduction, Alul says that technique is the totality of methods rationally arrived at and having absolute efficiency in every field of human activity. What does that mean, Anthony? <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> it is the um, it is the attack on the human individual and the soul. By and technique is not ma- just machines. Actually, these are yes. for a little technique is different than machines than technology. That yeah, this so are, he these wants are to different. Build. Yeah. 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 Um, so, and, and when he goes into the histories, that's where he, you know, right. He talks about really just being permeated with all sorts of things we do, um, whether it's with, yeah. you know, with tools or with magic or with mm-hmm. you know, whatever it is. It's, um, or science. It's, yeah. it, it's, it's kind of an attitude or a take that we have. On, mm-hmm. on how we're doing it. So we're, we're striving yeah. for perfection. Um, yeah. We're, we're not, we're not settling for uh, what is now. We want to tweak things, make it better. And, and why is that not, not good from a perspective? Why is that dangerous? Um, well, it, it turns everything into sort of utility, right? So, like, and that means human beings become utility. And and he even says in the in the opening chapter, I, I've always had like a million underlines because, like we were saying before, <laughs> our conversation before, I, so many I, I, find, I find his writing to be difficult at times and kind of a slog, and I kind of struggle through it a little bit. But then he'll just, he'll go on for a paragraph or two, and I'm like, it's like a fire was lit in my in my mind in my heart by his words, and I'm like, okay, like I get this is why we're reading him because he just has these points. But he so like technique, what he says, technique integrates the machine into society, right? So the machine is something different. Technique is the overarching attitude and orientation of man trying to control the created order, to control the cosmos. And then machine comes in and begins to replace human beings. And in this chapter, he he actually has a couple. There's a few phrases I want to like pick apart a little bit because I think it it sort of expands upon this idea and what what the kind of a technological man is and how he mm-hmm. has no soul. He's empty. He's void. But the idea of controlling everything and using the machine and science to um, bring something up from the sea to see if it's edible, but like it, it's blow, it blows up before it gets there. But like this idea mm-hmm. of um, it's almost like nihilistic, I would, I, I, I think, and I'm sure he, that's yeah. what he's getting at. Um, but disenchantment, yeah, yeah. So like disenchantment, um, it has a whole aesthetic to it, and I think uh, just to try to give a concise answer, to what you're saying is that. Uh, technique dis- is the destruction of creation, I would say, uh, mm-hmm. in a more specific sense. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if you agree yeah. with that. Um, yeah, I see. What but that's what, I, I'm, that's what I'm kind of like. And destruction is like uh, the idea that 
that there is mystery, but but technique is efficient and it has to control. So like mystery is not allowed. He gets this is part of what chapter two That's gets interesting. Into. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So like there's there's no room for like a secret. Technique and science have to pull everything apart and to show that there is nothing underneath. You know, lightning is just a electrical charge. There's nothing else to it, right? Like, that's what science, and we see that now, even more exaggerated than even in his day. And he's already like on top of it from like in like 1950 something. He's already yeah. on top of it. And that's like pre everything that we have now. So that's in a nutshell. Yeah. Why it's bad. It's good. Yeah. So, uh, do you want to uh, dig in with some some highlights some in chapter two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think like our these conversations are always not comprehensive. Just for all, right. everybody who's is listening, like these are just we're just giving some takes on some interesting portions of. Um, this what we find interesting in Alul and how we see that relate to our context now. There's a lot of really there's actually a few pretty good ones. I was actually uh the other week browsing on YouTube. Actually in the show notes, I'll send it to you to put in. There's a woman who okay. did a whole kind of lecture series on the technological. So she's a philosophy professor, I forget where, what university. Mm -hmm. Really good stuff. Like she really helped me kind of get my head around some of the things that he's talking about. Cause I think when you engage work, especially like a little from like the four, the fifties and the sixties, like there's there, he, he, he cites authors in here. I'm like, I don't know what that is. Like, I don't know. I've never read what, I forget what the guy's name is. But it's like, there's things that we're just not aware of. And I think it's helpful to, to, to read and listen to somebody like a secondary source who can help bring broader context and maybe a better introduction um, so you can get so you can get more out of the reading. Um, so uh, let's see where to start for chapter two. Um, I have a few. It's funny. I have a few different. I've been putting tabs at the bottom just to keep my place on things. But um, so chapter two is on the characteristic of te technique, right? That's that's the. Yes, the, sure. he says the characterology. The, the characterology, that's right. The characterology. Yeah. Sorry, we got to be. He gotta, has these like, funny ways of putting. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So prior to the, he does this, a historical sketch of technique, right? Through human history, he tries to give a sort of a Marxist materialist kind of interpretation, right? Of how technique has been threaded through humanity since the beginning. And showing that how, and how now we in our in the times in the 20th century, 21st century, he's like, there's never been the opportunity that there is now for technology and technique to explode the way it has. Right. The economic conditions, the stability of civilization, all these things contribute to like uh, mass scale technique that like no other society previously in history. Yeah. So that's kind of where he and leaves, you don't leaves you don't have off, to right? argue that to anybody today. I mean, we can all see it. <laughs> no, no, no. This is this is as plain yeah. as clear as day. This is there's one thing that's clear is that technology and technique have overrided everything in our culture and our society, especially in like the West, right? Especially in the yes. the modern West, it's very very prevalent. Um, there's kind of six sort of subsections that he gets into, uh, and I so like I. Again, so when I'm reading him, there's just things that pop out to me. And for one reason or another, where it's like things I'm thinking through that aren't with him, that, aren't, that aren't like a little, but like it relates to that or like just the way, think, way I'm seeing things. That's usually what will, will, will pop up to me. Um, and, and he gets into the kind of the implications of self-augmentation. Mm -hmm. uh, what he says, the individual's role is less and less important in, in, in technical evolution. So this starts to, to get at his point about the way in which technique um, becomes so embedded into our lives that actually the individual's role within it um, becomes diminished. And actually, like, the in, an individual is sort of a threat to the, the technological society because 
Technique wants to integrate everything into the machine. Whereas like human beings are not from a little standpoint and from our standpoint as Christians, like we're not meant, that's not our goal. Our union is not meant to be with like technique and the machine. Actually, our, 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 our union is supposed to be with the triune God, right? We're, we're, we participate in that union. Um, yeah. But so it, it, the, the way that technique pushes out the individual human being from any relevance is a, is start, what he's getting at here with the self augmentation. Um, and, and he, so he continues on that. And one thing, another one that really creeped out to me I, that, that stuck out to me was, uh, he says on, it's on page 94 technique modifies whatever it touches, but it is itself untouchable. Nothing in nature or in social or human life is comparable with it. Yeah. You can definitely see that. Um, yeah, I hear I hear what you're saying. The way he's saying there. Yeah, he, he I mean it's that's what makes it so sinister. Is that it's a it's a it's sort of like a high uh, extremely high level thing that's dictating how things are working down here. And if we're not mm -hmm. aware, you know, it's like, um, it's like somebody pulling the strings, but you don't see the strings. I don't know if that's a good, if it's a good analogy for it, but, um, okay. Yeah. Problem, yeah, yeah. The problem is there's nothing that is like relatable to it in nature. Like we don't see, there's nothing that we can see that relates to understanding this i don't want to say metaphysical because i think that's too strong of what a word for technique um but certainly it borders on for a lull this this like it, it's like technique is like the atmosphere right it's like the water yeah. we're swimming in it's like, like real presence like, yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's right replacing so it's like, real presence yeah imagine imagine you're a fish in water this is like a you know uh analogy you hear all the time but like the fish doesn't know it's swimming in water, right? Lives in water. So now like we're the technique is sort of like water, and we're like a fish, and we it's hard to you can't cat you can't categorize something that you don't you don't know or that you can't see or you can't relate to, um, and that isn't and technique is not like a I don't know if you would call it a demon I I'm, I don't know if you would mm. use that kind of I don't know if we we'll use that I'd language like talk that. later on. <laughs> yeah, I think I think to put like spiritual terms on it, like it's it I is don't know what a little like, says. Yeah. yeah, right. Like a little. I know I know a little is a Christian. I know this much. Yeah. Um, but principalities but part, and powers. Yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, Paul's. Yeah, right, right. So Paul's use of in Ephesians, right, the principalities and the powers. Like, I think that is a good way of understanding what technique is it's something that guides society but society doesn't see it it's on it's it's not quite recognizable because you know i guess if we want to use it it's like the something that's super like in super nature right we only see see quote unquote what is in front of us and, and that's how we conceive of what is real but when something supernatural penetrates in it's we don't really recognize it easily, um, and maybe that's in part what he's getting at with tech. It, it, trying to understand technique in a because he sees it as evil, he sees it as bad, so we have to like categorize it, and we have to try to at least understand how it affects us, and even still, like his his notion of what it is 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 quite hard to pin down fully because I think it's so broad and so sweeping his his definition but um yeah i noticed um <clears throat> like on page 66 he mentions um he, he says that uh my summary here that uh, our comfort is the highest end yeah um i think and that's an interest. Oh yeah, here's here's where he says comfort for us means bathrooms, easy chairs, 
foam rubber mattresses, air conditioning, washing machines, and so forth. The chief concern is to avoid effort and promote rest and physical euphoria. For us, comfort is closely associated with the material life. It manifests itself in the perfection of personal goods and machines. According, yeah, so, um, you know, it, that's, what, what's interesting is how this is shaping us as, as human beings, which is also important because, um, you know, we are very much uh, shaped by our environment and social, social culture. And, um, you know, I think the myth is that we just have all these things as tools, um, but they've become integrated into our experience of, of the, not just the human self, but our drives. Like our drives are, man, I want to be, I want to, I want comfort, you know, man, I couldn't live without a washing machine, you know, or, you know, I couldn't live without my cell phone. Uh, right. Right. You know, how am I going to make money on my online business or whatever? And we've, right. it's become so integrated into our, uh, what it means, what it feels like it means to be human for us. Um, the, and it, and it, and it, it, it's because we're getting wrapped up into this, this external thing that's, that's kind of uh, pulling us in and we're being manipulated, almost enslaved to it and and driven just by yeah. you know the, the internal comforts and and passions that that are spun up as these tools and things are integrated yeah i think experience. yeah i think it's hard to pull it apart now it's hard to pull ourselves apart from <laughs> what is this is our so convenience hard and our comfort it. yeah this well yeah this is in part what's really hard not only is pulling apart what he's saying because he's a a dense writer um but i think that the uh, and again this is this is back in like the 50s right like this is the technology we have now is so like even think about what we're doing here right like this this is insane to think about yeah. however many years ago but now we can pl plug in our bluetooth headphones wireless you know it's wirelessly we have wireless you know wi-fi i have a camera here that i bought for 30 dollars on amazon that's as clear yeah. as any cameras i used to be you know that we probably like, like camera. it's a it's a decent it's a next ago it's a decent camera but like because it, everything has gotten so far it's hard for us to like see ourselves separate i know for myself lately in particular i've i found myself very it's very hard for me to be off my phone for long stretches at a time whether it's like yeah. for my job what i'm doing for work um Twitter, which I love, I love Twitter. I get, I, I, there's a lot of stuff on there that I enjoy, which is weird for, I'm sure people to hear that enjoying Twitter or something. <laughs> but if you find the right niche, you can, you can enjoy it. But like, or like listening, you know, like listening to lectures, music, like all this. I, I've just found myself just because life is so full and stressful. It's just a way to comfort myself to use yeah. a little word, words. And um, it's, it's, it's incredibly difficult for us to think about life before. I mean, you know, we were both around before, you know, we had, di I had dial up internet growing up, right? Like I had, yep. I could, we couldn't use the phone if I use the internet. It says very inconvenient yeah, to use that. the internet, right? So like AOL days, AOL days, right? Like I, all this, <laughs> it used to be very, it wasn't smooth. It was actually pretty hard and my computer was pretty yeah. slow. Right, like we had one yeah. family computer that was in the living room, and it was slow. Yeah. I would play Command and Conquer on it, um, whatever. But like, it was, it was, it was not something that was like so easily accessible and so smooth and so effortless. And I think that's where I find such sinister things is in the effortlessness of it. Like it doesn't take much work for me to get on the internet at all. It takes actually it takes zero effort at all. It's just there right away, and and yeah, and I think just um, yeah, yeah. As I'm thinking about this, what's interesting is um, he and he does mention on page sixty-seven where he talks about differences in 
different time periods. Like in the medieval world, a room was in the Middle Ages, like a room could be finished even if it had no furniture in it. Yeah, right, if right, it, right. If it met its end. And so he's like, that's a different way that people were oriented towards technique and 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 technology and, and tools and and comforts. The you know, standing um, let's say in a space for <clears throat> worship. Uh, when we went to when we when we went to um, Eastern Europe and we got to see some of the cathedrals there the Orthodox cathedrals that, that were mainly stand standing places, you know, and, and we're used to in the West going to church and sitting in comfy chairs or pews. And um, mm-hmm. it just kind of shows, shows the difference that, that we do with our spaces and what we think makes it an end of a space or yeah. makes it finished. Um, and so I think that that's kind of a good example of a contrast where uh, here in this time period, in this culture, um, you know, there was still a lot of um, a precision that was trying to be made, but it wasn't um, the same kind of drive that we're in today, where it's like this uh, snowballing of, of uh, technology and, and technique. Um, mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Um, part of what I mean, the snowball effect, right? Like what you're what you're saying about. I just see, like, I just as I'm like as we're talking about this stuff, like I see in my life, like the way technique is just. It really has like. I don't want to say enslaved me because I'm still at least at I'm in a I'm aware of it. So like I'm not fully enslaved. It's a good term. It's an interesting term. Right. And I I'm seeing it. The snowball effect of like you do this one thing and then the other thing. And then you gotta get the new thing here and then here, right? Like we just perfected this app here. So we made it better. So we we got right. And I you know I I, re- I tried to resist for a little while. I got a dumb kind of a dummy phone that didn't have any. It only had like, it didn't have any photos. It was just text and call. And I had I could have like a RSS feed, feed me podcast episodes, and download some music. But I had to go to a website to put the music on the phone, mm-hmm. which is wild. Um, <laughs> I tried that for a little while, and I and I realized actually how hard it was for me to break off because I was forgetting things. Because so much of my calendar is on my phone, so like I, I would forget like appointments and things, and I would be really late for. And I was like, okay, like I actually have to have. So I tried for a minute, and it's hard. It's it takes like a it takes a lot of effort, not at least in in my current circumstance. So like as we're talking about this, the snowball effect of everything, and it's just like one thing after the other, and you know. I'm resistant to getting a new car because anything made before after like 2010 is like I don't know. There's so much technology and technique is everything. It wants to be more efficient. It wants to be smoother and it wants to be, you know, um, that it's just uh, there's something that trouble. It's so troubling to me, and I I don't really know what to do because at one point we're gonna have to get a car that's after 2010. Yeah, this is the curse of reading Jackie's a little. By the way, you will. It really is. You will kind of feel his negativity, and then it will sort of yeah make you wonder like, why do I want all this stuff? Or why do well, I the problem this? is, is like <laughs> I was already really negative. I was already really yeah. suspicious and negative at technology. Yeah. Years, you, re- you realized years you weren't now. as as much as he is. <laughs> and then he like rat. I mean, he's really. Yeah. I mean, he radicalized me a lot more in my short yeah. readings. You know more like sparse readings for like papers and stuff like that and for yeah personal stuff so like yeah i mean this is more he's giving you the if anything he's giving you the length to me he's giving me the language to understand it right like before i felt uneasy about um even having alexa in my house right like which i don't i don't have like a 
I don't have a thing, one of those Alexa speak. I don't have one of those. Because I'm still like, I hate those and I don't. But that's my old, like. Yeah, I feel bad because I. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I hear you. I'm there. <laughs> I actually, it's funny because I. Uh, before I got really concerned about all this and technology, we got a bunch of those Google Homes. <laughs> and uh, yeah. have them scattered throughout the house, and right. over time, I'm like, like more and more, like, ah, we got to de-Google, you know, we got to get, you know, this is a problem. Uh -huh. and, you yeah. Know, now, now it's really becoming an issue, and you uh -huh. know, it's a CIA hack and everything, and and something like you know, that. I'm sitting yeah. here saying that phrase with the Google Mini, with the right like, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hear me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh -huh. I mean, it's, well, I, it's one of those things. It's so goofy. It's so hypocritical I, once you're in the middle. Of it. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, it's like it's, you, you can't help but be, right? Like, it's there's nothing you can... It's so hard to resist the, the ease of it, right? And the the comfort and the convenience. Like, these things are like... It's like it's like a siren's call, right? Like, in the sea, right? Like, it's it, it like calls you. You can't resist it because it's there's an enchantment to it. And I don't think we think enough about this way the ways in of which like technology actually is like magic like almost black magic at times right like it's uh yeah. it's a way of 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 contorting reality to fit our needs and comforts and desires rather than like you know say the true magic of the gospel which is something that is outward focus that is other focus and not like about me getting my own things you know there's like ways of doing that stuff so I, for me like it, it, it is enchantment. There are spells that are being flung everywhere, and it, some spells catch certain people much more dramatically. You know, like I've I'm like kind of a contrarian guy who, in my bones, I resist at the first turn of <laughs> of anything, which is was really annoying for my wife early on in our relationship. <laughs> um, and I've learned how to like or I've learned how to temper it and orient it the a better better ways than just like immediately just aggressively fighting against everything. I'm even still in our conversations recently. I'm like, Oh, I'm still kind of doing that thing. But <laughs> um, even for myself, who is a steep contrarian who does not, never wants to go with the crowd. I'm still, yeah. there are certain things that like beckon my call. Like, it calls me and I, I can't, I feel helplessly pulled along to it. And um, I think part of what I, at least I, what I want to integrate with the little, is uh, which I think he wouldn't disagree with is about like the the world is really enchanted and we need to start thinking about it more along those terms because it makes more sense when we read stories about people falling under the spell and it can help us maybe recognize our own experience of like I gotta get the the iPhone 14 because like it has this and that and it's like it's like this it's like this talisman that's enchanted that you need to have so you could it thinks it will make you a better person or something and maybe that's part of technique is like it it gives you the the illusion of of improvement or something and i'm sure he gets yeah. something like that but you know i think you know, that's part um, of it it's working with like you know this is just me ripping here but it's working with um, mm -hmm. your dopamine and um instant gratification and i think it's made us weaker um, yeah. you know, I think of, um, you know, just the, with, with delayed gratification, there's so much, um, that, that is part of our own conditioning to make us better and stronger and more, more full in our life when, when we're able to temper, um, those things. But it, there's an interesting thing with technology, you know, even I, I, I think about these, um, um, you know, people getting into drugs and stuff. I, I think about that because uh, you mentioned Twitter. I'm seeing all these. Of course, my my Twitter feed. I I have my own sort of echo chamber where mm -hmm. somehow I'm getting all these posts of funny uh, videos of people on drugs. <laughs> you know, like, of course, um, the yeah. fentanyl crowd. And you know, I think oh, yeah. there's just something with that of like wanting to have the euphoria, the high, the you know, without with uh, without delayed gratification. And there's something with that with tech too, 
okay. on a to transcend certain kinds of inconveniences or or bypass um, to get the gratification we need that's um, that seems ready at hand and seems easy. Work and smarter, it, not harder, right? Right. And you know, I understand yeah. that. It's so it's so weird. This is why it's hard. And you'll have a love hate relationship with Lulul as you read these things because you'll think, well, yeah. But you know, these things advance human culture and they seem to be good, but they're not always good for us. And and in fact, mm -hmm. I think they're taking us in a weird direction. So, you know, he says in page 79 that we're rapidly approaching the time when, when there will be no longer any natural environment at all. Mm -hmm. And I think, man, he's writing that in the fifties and you have someone like, you know, people like the world economic forum and Klaus Schwab, Hoff, whatever his name is, Klaus Schwab and those yep. people that want to sort of, you know, bio digitize all of human life and, you know, um, the ocean and those kinds of things and, you know, tag yeah. every animal. And I, I think, I mean, that's, that's where we're heading with all this. It's like a, yeah, it's like a sucking uh, mm -hmm. it's just it's just trying to replace the real presence of, of God mm -hmm. in my opinion. But, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I think you know, I think you're you're a, a million percent correct. Um I think the the problem is people the environment that we're in technology is like and science are elevated to the highest possible levels, right? Like the newest form of technology will save a life. It'll make something easier for this and that. And um, it's it's hard to be critical of it when you like when you see the like the efficiency and what it's done, right? So like, yeah. And I think you can break. That doesn't have to be a heart transplant for my loved one. Right. Yeah. Right. Like those are those are good things. Those aren't actually like a little would not say that's the problem. I don't think it's right. the problem either. Like that. The thing. Good things that are being performed is not the problem. I do think, however, he says, and he's right, it's on page 97, where he says that technique never observes the distinction between moral and immoral use. It tends, on the contrary, to create a completely independent tech technical morality. Right? So, like, th that is good. And we see, we understand that in our sort of moral, ethical frameworks that, like, saving lives making thing, making suffering less is, is morally correct but not because uh somehow retroactively less suffering is good because for arbitrary reasons but because we have a, we have a well of of moral and ethical understandings from from god and his, and his life right as christ and like exactly. we have these deep deep moral frameworks and we know we can interpret things as right or wrong but the technique and the technological sort of society it, there is no real discernment. It creates its own sort of moral codes, right? So yeah. whatever is most efficient, whatever is easiest, are often seen as the highest moral thing in the in the independent uh, the independent technical morality, um, yeah. which is really dangerous. And we forget like these long-standing traditions of philosophical understandings and discussions around ethics and codes and you know decorum and um, and it, and it, and you can see how it has created this sort of. Aside of all the the stuff about, I think like global government and these sort of really to me sinister things. That aside, even in in sort of lower level like technological circles, you you see this really empty, shallow understanding of not only human beings but of like life in general, right? It's very yeah. sort of it's obsession about like the, the latest technology and everything is smooth and nothing can be rough edged. And like you said, like to get all, get rid of all effort and all anything that would give us delayed gratification is seen as morally in more, either morally wrong or like an inadequate ill way of living. Um, and I think, uh, I think you're, you are right on that. Um, point but yeah. um yeah okay. i think i think you're right i think that this this drive it, you can see where it's happening at the meta level where um 
there will be ethics that um, that people are are thrown into. Like if I am in control of like this much of society and population is an issue or this thing is an issue, it's easy. Right, right, right. Well, I got to push this button or do this thing because I'm thrown into this, um, you know, really bizarre ethical situation. But yeah. like you said, it's it, we've lost our humanity. We've lost our. Um, it, it's something else that's driving us at that point. It's a, it's the zeitgeist of the technology. Yeah, I, I just stumbled across something else that relates to what we're talking about here. He says it's like it's all like page page one thirty five, but he says that it is a common place to say that the machine replaces the human being, but it replaces him to a greater degree than he is, than he, than has been believed. The worker no longer needed to guide or move the machine to action will be required merely to watch it and to repair it when it breaks down. So like this idea of any, even, even cultivating skills to use machines, right? The, the technique gets it to such a level where it like the user is, only has to press a few buttons. I mean, think about even before, like, saving stuff on a hard drive years and years and years ago, how hard that was. <laughs> it took yeah. a long time. And, a lot, and it, like, it was almost off. It's off-putting thinking about it now, but, like, maybe we were more human when it was harder to do this stuff at some level, right? Like, I know it's a very dramatic statement, but yeah, I don't know. There's something yeah, about, I, like... I, I see what he's saying. Yeah. Being being human is like is guiding is guiding and working and skills and embody like there's nothing embodied about just like watching a machine work and then repairing it if it breaks like the embo- there's embodiment in repairing it right but like mm-hmm. the idea of just watching something I don't know there's there's a whole other level of things here but um, but you lose a lot. I mean, we can feel it, right? Like, we can feel like our humanity is lessened. And I don't know if that's, like... I mean, I know that there's purpose behind that. And I know there's, like, bigger, broader ideas at work here about what it means to be human. You see this in the in the debate now. Like, mm-hmm. yes. it, technique has its way, right? Like, all these debates on what it means to be human get even more sinister and more harder to have. Um. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. So. Um, I'm trying. I'm looking at my notes here. Um, trying to understand his uh, what I wrote. <laughs> Interpreting what I wrote here. <laughs> well, I have. I have another one that I actually found almost the most poignant to me but if you have something no 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 feel uh, free to... yeah i need to gather my thoughts here with this. Go, go ahead. okay so this is towards the end of the this is towards like the end of chapter two but i think it is um is it the two laws no but you should talk about that if you're if you're able to i i'm trying to get my head back that. into it <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you talk and I'll look. No, so there's two, on page 142, he talks about how man cannot live without a sense of the secret. Um, but the invasion of technique desacralizes the world in which man is called upon to live. For technique, nothing is sacred. There is no mystery, no taboo. Autonomy makes this so. Technique does not accept the existence of rules outside itself or any of any norm. Still less, it will accept any judgment upon it. As a consequence, no matter where it penetrates, what it does is permitted, lawful, and justified. So, like, the idea of technique transcends any sense of sacred understandings of the world, right? Creation, these laws that are not, that are not happened upon by, by rational or, or uh, physical evidence. Like, these things are all pre, pre-date and pre under there, There's, like, a... It's like a pre-cog, almost precognitive ways of understanding the world um, that aren't reliant on scientific data and evidence and whatever interpretation. And he says, yeah. this is what like, so this is what really sparked the fire in me when I was reading it. He says, technique worships nothing, respects nothing. It has a single role, 
to strip off externals to bring everything to light, and by rational use to transform everything into means. More than science, which limits itself to explaining the how, technique desacralizes because it demonstrates by evidence and not reason and not by reason, uh, through use and not through books, that mystery does not exist. Science brings to the light of day everything man had believed sacred. Technique takes possession of it and enslaves it. The sacred cannot resist. Science penetrates to the great depths of the sea to photograph the unknown fish of the deep. Technique captures them, hauls them up to see if they are edible, but before they arrive on deck, they burst. <laughs> so, like, yeah, that's good. That's this so is the good. most. This is an incredibly penetrating insight to like now in particular. I think more, more than even then, you you get this sense in which like. The whole point of science, and you have the, like the atheist bros, and the the way that they, way that people think about science is that like God doesn't exist because science says He doesn't exist. There's no evidence of Him, and like then anything that is sacred, right? Like the ideas of like marriage and morality, um, the idea of the created order being something that we need to nourish and take care of rather than control and dominate, right? Like science has no care for that. It wants to destroy, and and this is science at a not like science in terms of like its proper role in the world of like helping us understand like what how water boils or whatever it is right like it is role of like it doesn't overstep the bounds of just measuring and interpreting that data because the world is real yeah yeah, it's trying to re restructure in a kaleidoscopic way yes uh everything that 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 we've that have basically been part of a human life. Basically like this. Um, you think what it means to have a family is to, to get married, to have kids, to raise the kids so they can then have a family, and that's how culture goes on. And there's a sacred aspect to that with marriage and everything else. But then uh, what, what gets back here into technique is, oh, maybe we could do this better. Maybe we could... Right raise raise kids at a pod or yeah i mean that, that's like i mean right, it sounds right. crazy but but where does it end it just we're not that know. far off from that yeah, yeah we're not that far off um yeah, yeah i think the so like any i guess we can get it in a little bit the idea of um the sort of progressive idea right that all all the rules that have come before us and that have our society is built on are like patriarchal and evil and they oppress people from fully expressing who they are right like this is sort of the modern you know aoc this sort of perspective about western culture is is evil because it it wants to put people in boxes it wants to keep people it wants to keep people it wants to to keep them enslaved to like the traditional whatever it is morality or and that all has to be like from completely reworked from the bottom up all the stuff that has stabilized civilization, that has created, <laughs> has created all this stuff and kept it going, that all needs yeah. to go away because it's it, it, it is oppressive, and it is it is evil to to force people to live by a certain one certain code. There's other codes that they're fine with. I think that everybody should be having sex all the time, whatever <laughs> it is. Like the, uh, you need, you can live by this code. You can't live by this code, but you have to live by right. this. So like it, it does me, like contrad- yeah, it, but it enslaves you to something something yes. else that transcends your human intuition yeah. of uh, virtue and morality, and I think that's that's what where what's kind of happening is I, I yeah. would distinguish it too between like a Marxian left or a certain kind of progressive, uh, maybe an old old. I think there's a different thing going on now where there's it's driven towards technocracy and using technology, technique, and technocracy to to spin us into these um, worlds of contradiction, at least from our human standpoint. Um, yeah, where, where I think it was maybe a little bit different for Marx, you know, or a little bit mm-hmm. different for even Marxism in a little's day. But he could see it; he could see where mm-hmm. certain things were going. So you could distinguish like the kind of eugenics, uh, technocratic, so-called progressivism, bit, right? From from like an old left, which he was mm-hmm. a part of. He saw himself as his old left. Yes. Um, 
but he was very much uh, concerned about what this meant for humanity, what this meant mm-hmm. for um, organic culture and organic relationships. And yeah, um, yeah, I think that. Well, it- he had a very, I, I can't mean, believe he, how much he anticipated what we're dealing with now. With yeah, it's uh, it's like yeah. it's like there's the, you, you change some of the the wording and the metaphor or like the author cited like it, it's modern it's like modern day like he could have written this last year and yeah. it was it would still be extremely accurate. I think Elul does have and maybe this is the difference between like the older guard of progressive pol- pol- mm-hmm. pol- like political and now or is like. They kind of had a concrete vision of what a human being is at some level, right? Like, yeah. there was like a concrete understanding of like man and woman, and I mean, they had different understandings of like roles and whatever it is, like from like a right. say a right wing or whatever. But like, but yeah. at least it, you could you could at least understand that the like, left the and right was different. Yeah, it it was operating right. at a level that wasn't at this technocratic stage that we're in right now. Yeah, I don't know if he, I don't know if it's in the previous chapter where he talks about the, I mean, maybe I'm just feeding my own stuff into this, but like the abstraction of everything. I don't know if he gets in, I don't know if he got into that last chapter, right? Like the sort of technology has to abstract things to like control them. And um, and it seems like saying with that. Yeah. 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 Like even now, like you get, you kind of get on right, right and left paradigms where they, they have to abstract the human being. Into some into some like ether as an idea, rather than like embodied yeah. embodied human beings that are like concrete and like have a pit, yeah. you know like emotions and feelings and um and, and a culture and yeah. prejudices and whatever it is like people are not just ideas floating in the ether which technique wants to do and which both right I would say I would argue both right and left in American politics also want to abstract human beings into this whatever vision they have whether it's like there is no such thing as gender you can be whatever you want or the hyper like they men are have to be this way women have to be this way and it's like none of those things actually relate to concrete organic reality at all actually what it does is it like it shapes creation in its own image and its own image has to be this it has to be this or it has to be endless and there can be no, there can be nothing preventing somebody from having endless expression for who they are, which is somehow secretly locked inside. And people only get in the way of that. They don't actually know who you are. And I think, it, again, it's like technique. So that's where I also see technique in the, the broader political culture. And yep. um, I'm happy to be corrected on that if anybody wants to correct me. <laughs> but I, yeah, it would I think be interesting. It seems correct. Yeah, and that my intention, even too, when we were getting into this, is get people on different political sides, but maybe not, or maybe also thinking along the the little uh, train of thought. And yeah, that's definitely something we're interested in. What what you got? What you all think? Um, but yeah, I mean, this is this is really um, this is what reading a little will do is kind of make you face our current situation, our own lives. And um, it, it is challenging. I, I think it's been a challenging read for me because my eyes open up to more things that I've been enslaved with my comforts. <laughs> yeah. Than yeah, I, man. Than Comfort I is the... To admit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I, I like how he also says, and I think in that one of those pages that you're reading, he says that comfort takes takes for death for granted. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's an interesting... Um, and we're, we're... Yeah. Well, like... I also think like we're a society where we put death at the corners. We put death at the edges. Like it's all like abstract from us and like in a nursing home or in a hospital hospice care. Look what we like, did. Yeah. yeah. Look what we do with our older, with older people. We used to take care of right. them and bring them into our home. Now we they died. In, they died we, in the family want, house, right? We might go visit them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and mm-hmm. now we might go visit them at a nursing home somewhere. Right. Um, where they're getting. You know, yeah. <laughs> But they're getting beaten and murdered by. <laughs> I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but like there are so many stories. There's one story of a woman who like killed like 40 people because she gave them too much of this thing, and she did an accident once, and then she continued to do it. And people, she thought she was being merciful, 
and letting and oh, killing them. So like, yeah, there's like, do, there's like a, there's like a, yeah, it's like, it's like anything where you, if you outsource yeah. like even, you know, say like a family, take like a family for example, like a husband and wife split up, but then the wife or husband brings in another person who isn't biologically, the 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 chances of abuse go up twenty times. Uh, child abuse goes up twenty. Uh, how, it's insane, yeah. and like the way that we have have outsourced everything, and death is always at the corners, always at the reaches. We you know we take we take death for granted, and death is not a process. It's not something like a natural end, but like it's an interruption in our life. It becomes, yeah. uh, and I I mean I maybe have said this before in a previous podcast, but like. Uh, there's a guy, Bra- Byung Chul Han is my fa- one of my fa- my favorite living philosopher. He's a Korean Hegelian guy. He talks yeah. about like time and like the way death is inter- it is an interruption. It's no longer um, an end to a life, and that you know the the natural orientation or end of life, but like rather it it gets in the way, right? So we have to pu- mm-hmm. we have to push it to the boundaries, and I think technique does yeah, the same sure. thing it abstracts it from our life. And so we don't see our end. We only see the comfort and convenience and to, 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 to like distract ourselves from anything that would impede from our life, thinking that we're going to be successful and like all of our dreams are going to be accomplished. And um, yeah, so I just some more related thoughts, but that's good. Yeah. Well, um, any last thoughts before we? No, I mean I think that's some some decent. Like I said, we're not going to be over. We're not going to be overly analyzing every sentence or word. I think just right. from you know, we want to we want to at least get some of the essence of what he's saying and try to relate it out to what we're going through. And um, I'm always if anybody you know watches this on, on YouTube or Odyssey or whatever it is like any. Genuinely, I, I'm interested in your thoughts, and I'm interested to hear um, what what people think about this. And it, people are interested in a little because I think I hope more people do start to get more interested because I think he was. And we've said this so many times already, but like so ahead of his time, like it's it's insane how right. how how correct it is and how sharp and piercing it it, it becomes when you're reading it. You're like, oh my gosh, like I'm technique has like just drowned me i'm like i i'm lost and yeah. you need the you know you need the the lens to to see your way out of it but yeah yeah and so you don't uh, lose hope he he himself uh when interviewed it you know was asked you know how come you're not super depressed and he said well yeah you gotta see my theological writings and exactly and it, for right him it's it's how do you escape this well it's it's to remember a real presence and yes. God's real presence, and um, yes, and, and for us to build off of that. So I think, um, <clears throat> yeah, we'd love to hear your thoughts. We would uh, love it if you commented, shared, liked, and um, you know, show show your friends this this podcast and definitely the book. Um, talk about it with people. The Technological Society. It's a good book, and we're glad to. Um, you're getting into it and people will think you're weird at first. People will yeah. think you're weird. <laughs> You'll think you're, will. you're, you're weird yourself. <laughs> uh, I've, I, I, I don't think anybody thinks of me as a, as a, I'm weird. Same I've been weird no. <laughs> for a very long time. I'm not a sane person. Uh, I'm not sane. I'll put it that way. But, um, but sometimes you need to be a little crazy to engage the world. You know, you can't just go with everything. Absolutely. You got to, Got to push back a little bit, and a little is a good way. He's a really brilliant way of pushing back against the the technocratic, the technocracy, if you will. Situation, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, thank thanks for listening again. Like, comment, share, uh, tweet. We're we're on Twitter. What what's the handle? Discerning discerning forms. Discerning forms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, We're on Buzzsprout. We're on any pod catcher that you that you use thanks for listening yep